They referenced it. They freaking referenced it. My God, Oda. I love I love this man. I really do. Um, you know, not nothing makes me happier when I read a long running manga series or any series really. Uh, let's say longer than like you know five hundred chapters or so. It it's when they go back and they reference things that happened literally years ago. You know, One Piece is honing in on its like twentieth year anniversary next year, and. You know, th this was something that got brought up in chapter 227. I went back and checked, 227. And it's like, back then, it's like not a big deal, but it's like, yeah, you see what I did there? I just sprinkled a little bit of that foreshadowing dust on you about Sanji's birthplace. Wasn't like a big deal back then, but then, boom! Blows up in your face now, like 10 years fucking later. Love that. L hope you're wearing a helmet because I'm about to blow your mind, you know? Love that shit. Now, granted, since we knew that Sanji's backstory was going to be revealed, a lot of people have been going back and pretty much examining... And like cross-examining everything that's ever happened in One Piece, in, in in One Piece that involves Sanji and his backstory and his origins, um, but for the longest time, you know, I, at first I thought like, okay, Sanji's from the North Blue, okay, he's it's, he's from the North Blue, all right, whatever. Well, anyway, this is uh, chapter eight hundred thirteen of One Piece titled um, "The Invitation to the Tea Party." And this is the chapter that kind of just wraps up the uh, the uh, flashback from uh, where, uh, like, the events that Sanji left Zoe with Caesar, and this uh, brings us back to the present storyline, and everything's just kind of caught up. We get to see the note that Sanji wrote for the Straw Hat crew. We get to see what was there and the situation behind him and his uh, family. So after last chapter where Capone explained, you know, oh, well, there's this wedding, and you're going to be coming to it. You're going to be the groom, and this is going to be the uh, the bride, and it's, you know, Sanji Vinsmoke. And we found out, okay, that's his last name. So Sanji drops his cigarette out of his mouth. It lands on the floor of Capone's castle. This becomes important later on. And Sanji's just like, okay, where did you get that information from? Or who told you that or whatever? And Capone's basically just like, dude, I'm not in your family. I don't know what the fuck. It just This is the invitation we get and you're coming to this tea party now. So uh, the cigarette that actually landed on the floor, though, I'll just cover this really quick. It's it, it doesn't just smolder and die out, you know, like a regular cigarette when it hit the floor. It begins to actually catch fire. And remember, they were, they're inside Capone. They're inside his, uh, his castle uh, because of his uh, Shiro Shiro fruit no, uh, no me powers. So... And I don't know what this means exactly, that he's just flammable on the inside. I, d I don't get what that means. Suffice it to say, maybe that anything on the outside that comes inside is capable of hurting him. Because Capone is always going around smoking those big-ass cigars. <laughs> so, I mean, like, if, if fire is that big of a deal to him, I don't know why he would be going around smoking inside of himself, you know? So maybe it's something to do with just because, you know, Sanji is originally from the outside of his body, and, and he dropped something flammable, and that caused, like, the flames. I don't know. But Capone seemed very startled by this, and he, like, snuffed out the fire really quickly. Uh, but, yeah, that's probably going to come into play later on during whoever the hell is going to fight Capone in this upcoming arc, which is probably going to be at least somebody in the Straw Hat crew. Um, well, anyway, we get some references on the Vin Smoke family, or what I, I hear is the, it's not pronounced Vine Smoke, like wine smoke, and hey, that makes sense because, you know, uh, you know Sanji cooking wine. Uh, so the, the wine smokes are the ones that really set this up, this wedding, and uh, Capone goes along a bit, he's just like, oh, they, they haven't groomed you very well, apparently, so they're, they're, they don't get especially, like, expressly stated what the Vine Smoke family are, if they're nobility, if they're related to celestial dragons in some way, but they are of clearly of the higher echelon. So at least, even if it's just like one country that they just happen to be the nobility of, or just one island, they're clearly of a very affluent variety. So then we get the reference back. Uh, you know, when Nami hears his uh, last name, she remembers the time on uh, during the Jaya arc when they were on uh, Mon Blanc Nolan's. Um, property and they were reading the book on Nolan the Liar and Nami's like well this book was published in the North Blue and Sanji's like oh yeah I was born in the North Blue and you know Usopp's like well I thought you were born in the East and not and uh, Sanji's like oh yeah yeah no I was born in the North but I was raised in the East. you know what it doesn't matter it doesn't matter and that's all that was and I thought that was a very interesting thing back then um, I mean, I didn't think much of it, you know, but I thought it was like, okay, because we didn't really know much about the North Blue back then. At that point in the story, all we really knew about was the East Blue, and that was pretty much it, and then the Grand Line. Um, so I thought it was interesting back then they mentioned another part of the world, but they didn't really go anywhere, so I just kind of just wrote it off. Um, and Brooke brings up the big deal that why Sanji is from the North Blue going to the East Blue, because that is divided by the Red Line, the Red Line, the continent that completely circles the globe. Um, so traveling from the North Blue to the East Blue is, is no easy feat, because you have to cross this massive continent. And I guess the reason I never thought of this weird is because... 
I, I guess I just always assumed that traveling between the oceans wasn't that big of a deal as long as you weren't, like, a pirate or somebody that was breaking the law. I just assumed that, like, okay, there's, there's some procedures in place that if you want to cross the red line and you're a civilian... Uh, and you, you, you can just, you know, hop on the land, travel across it, and then just hop back on the other side. Um, that's what I always guess, but apparently it's like a really huge undertaking, you know? And it's also something, like, I just realized that all four of the seas are massively, like, secluded. Like, they might as well all be different countries, because you have, like, the north blue, like, you have the east blue on top, and, like, the south blue is below that, but you have to cross the Grand Line, which is a no-go for just, like, a regular citizen. You can't do that. So, unless you're a uh, part of the Marines, you're pretty much screwed. You're pretty much locked in this one part of the ocean, and then you got the red line on either side. So, I, I guess I just never figured it, but yeah, the, every sea is pretty much just completely locked into whatever set they're in. And uh, the only way you can cross at your leisure, I guess, is if you're of nobility or if you have ties with the Marines or some shit. And then you can cross the comm belt and under the Grand Line and just do that as you please. Well... Uh, yeah, so that's that's the part Brooke brings up, and also another thing with Brooke is he knows the Vine Smoke family. He's at least heard the name before, because when Capone stated that was Sanji's last name, Cap uh, Brooke starts freaking out. He's like, "Oh, I got you know shivers down my spine, you know, because I'm a skeleton." Ho ho, skull joke. Um, and he, he brings up like he he doesn't really specifically say why he's afraid of it. He's just like it's like that that name sign of like you know it just doesn't jive with me. And I'm like, wait, could that possibly be this? And he just kind of trails off and doesn't really go anywhere. Um, I don't know if he's referring to like like he had dealings with the family in the past, or maybe he had dealings with one particular member. Maybe he met somebody a long time ago in his journey. Because remember, Brooke is ninety years old. He is the guy, he's the guy that has the most life experience in all of the Straw Hats, and I love little moments with Brooke, like, remember back when they were in Shockey's bar, back in the, uh, uh, Sabah Ondi, and they reference Goldie Roger, and Brooke is sitting there just eating some beans or whatever, and he's like, oh yeah, Goldie Roger, yeah, yeah, I think I remember hearing something about him, he was like a rookie when we were pirates, you know, so I like, I like little references, because Brooke is from like a completely different time period, and I, I just love that. Um, so maybe Brooke in his travels with the Rumbar Pirates, maybe he met, like, one person that had the name Vine Smoke and it just rubbed him the wrong way, or maybe he had dealings with, because he doesn't just, if he knew who they were specifically, he'd just be like, oh, the Vine Smoke family, yeah, they're this noble family and their connections are to this, and this is why that's a big deal, and blah blah blah, but he doesn't, so it's just like a vague, maybe, just he vaguely remembers it, kind of like Goldie Roger, maybe. Um, Caesar brings up the bigger point, though, that he thinks is, it's not just the fact whatever Sanji's last name is, he just referenced uh, the Charlotte family, which, as uh, most people figured out, is, uh, is is in fact Big Mom's family, Charlotte Linlin, um, and that that's her daughter. So the bigger deal here is um, if, if, if Sanji goes through with this marriage, if it just goes the way that Big Mom or whoever planning this wedding is set up, then just by default, by marrying this person, the Straw Hats will be under the reign or under the control of the Big Mom Pirates. That's just what happens, I guess, when you have pirate unions, I guess. I don't know. This is getting kind of Game of Thrones for me. But, uh, yeah, the, 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 this is a cool part from Sanji here where, you know, he's obviously not going to go through with this, you know. But he brings up the one main point why he's not going to go through with this. And he says it right to Capone's face, strikes a very seri serious glare. And he's like, you know, uh, our captain ain't the kind of guy that's just going to sit back and just let that happen. Let him be under the control of a, it doesn't matter who it is, if it's a Yonku or and whoever. Because Luffy's the man who will become the Pirate King. And he strikes that really serious glare. And I had big, huge contrast to the time when Zoro did that shit back on Thriller Bark. When uh, Kuma was there, and he's like, "Okay, well, I won't kill him, but you know, you have to give me in return, you something me in return, and I'm gonna, you know, make you suffer with all this uh, pain that your captain endured." And Zoro's response to that was basically, "Sure, because Luffy's gonna be the pirate king," and that was like one of Zoro's defining moments there. You know, like he holds truth to Luffy's goal this much; he's even willing to sacrifice himself. They're very loyal to their captain. Same vibe coming off from Sanji here, so I got to give him a clap right there for that. Um, well, Capone basically says, hey, look, uh, I'm not here to, I'm, I'm here to, like, tell you what's going on and here to bring you back. This isn't, like, a yes or no kind of agreement. You guys are already quite literally inside of me. That sounded wrong. And they've already started walking away. And sure enough, we cut to the outside. We see that Capone's body on Zoe is beginning to, I guess, walk back to the ship. So I guess 
he's able to like either split his consciousness because he's talking to them while inside of his body, but his own body is actually conscious enough to start moving back to the ship. So I don't know if this is like he can just clone himself within the confines of his own, um, you know, uh, castle or whatever. But anyway, um, Sanji's like, like, well, look, you can have Caesar. I don't give a shit about him. Just let us go. And, he, and Capone's like, nope, that's not how we're doing this. And he states that the true power of his Shiro Shiro no Mi is that he's able to have complete reign and control over... Hi, Duchess, how are you doing today? Um, complete reign and control over his body. And he contorts the room around him and he points cannons and knives and shit. I love it because you have like a candelabra and like knives start poking at it. The tablecloth wraps around Sanji's freaking neck. And uh, so... Sanji um, is approached by the advisor of the uh, Fire Tank Pirates, a guy named Vito, or Monster Gun Vito. This guy, uh, he's pretty he's pretty out there design. He has a really long, curly demon tongue. His hands are fucking huge, like so disproportional for the rest of his body. And he's, he's holding these two ridiculous revolvers, like the size of like a, ta a kitchen table. You know, one is in a holster, the other one he's holding up. And he's just, like, cocking it, ready to blow fucking Sanji's head off with these huge-ass hands. And uh, I think I know why they called him Vito, because um, if you've ever seen The Godfather, which, if you haven't already seen The Godfather, go see The Fucking Godfather, uh, Vito Caponelli, uh, that, that's the name of the Don from The Godfather series. And oh, by the way, even though I just said that, hey, you guys should go see The, God the Godfather, I've never seen The Godfather. Uh, so, yeah, uh... Don't know why I brought that up, just to sound snarky, I suppose. But anyway, yeah, uh, he basically goes up to Sanji. He's like, well, when you get invited by a tea party to, um, when mom invites you to a tea party, you're, it's basically like a summons. You don't have a choice in the matter here. It's basically just like a nice way of saying, you know, you're, you're going to get your ass here regardless. Uh, and the number of people that are just don't show up or, you know, don't check the RSVP box on the fucking um Invitation. They just end up dead by the next morning, so you're going to this. But to just hammer it in deeper, Vito leans down to Sanji and whispers in his ear something. And Sanji just kind of freaks out a little bit. He widens his eyes, and then he just, like, lights up another cig, and he's just like, okay, I guess we're doing this now. So that, whatever Vito, and not the fact that it's just the Vin Smoke family coming back into his life, uh, whatever past he was trying to hide behind him, it's now whatever Vito spoke to him is something of more relevance that it's like, yeah, I need to deal with this right now so that this never comes back to haunt me again. That's the vibe I'm getting off this. Uh, and he asks, you know, he, he, we're not going to find out in this chapter. The second that Vito, you know, whispered it to him. I was like, oh, yeah, we're not going to find out shit about that in this chapter. That That's something we're probably not going to find out for quite some time. Well, every time one mystery gets uh, solved, we get another one. Um, I mean, Sanji asks him, like, how'd you find that piece of information out? And... Um, Capone's like, that's ridiculous. Our captain, the one that's the leader of all of us, is one of the fucking Yonku, one of the four strongest freaking pirates in the world. We can learn that shit easy. So that's when Sanji asks for the pen and paper and to write down, you know, the note to Luffy. We'll find out what that says. He gives it to Nami uh, and basically just like, okay, give this to the others. And he says that he's using, I guess, his observation hockey and he's like kind of whispering to him. He's like, okay, I can sense that there's one of the minks outside. Um, and it's pretty strong, so just, you know, watch yourselves when you get out of here, and everyone's like, wait, what? So he just then kicks all of them right out of Capone's body. I guess Capone was stupid enough to leave the fucking front door open. So he kicks them right out of Capone's body, and they re-enlarge, and sure enough, the, the mink that was right next to them was, uh, fucking Neko Mamushi. Um, you know, he's standing right beside freaking Capone, ready to freaking claw his eyes out, I guess. And meanwhile, back on the inside, Sanji gets his hand on one of the freaking guns of one of the fire tank pirate members, points it right at Caesar, and he's like, Wait a second, I just realized something. I can only be brought in if I'm alive, hence my wanted poster. You guys can't kill me. You guys are probably not even going to lock me up. So this is the fucking art. This is what we're doing. You're going to take me so I can go deal with this family problems, and then you're going to take Caesar, and you're going to leave everyone else away, and I'm not going to bother them. And uh, sure enough, uh, Capone just goes ahead with this plan, uh, because if he doesn't, then he's going to be dealing with either Sanji on the inside causing trouble, and then Nekamamushi behind him with his guardians ready to just kick his ass. So he decides just to, you know, book the hell out of there. So he activates an ability called castle tank where his he pulls a frankie basically where his uh lower body just turns into fucking tank treads and he just zooms away off of zo 
and everyone's just like, oh, should we, uh, should we follow him? Like, Wanda's like, should we follow him? And then, and then Brooke is like, no, because he wouldn't come back anyway. And, uh, sure enough, the last thing that Sanji says to them before they leave is basically just, like, he just turns and smiles, and he's just like, don't worry, this is my prom, I promise I'll be back, Sarah, tell everyone I said hi, you know? And that's that. Uh, that's the end of the chapter. We, uh, have Brooke and everyone kind of in tears, and then the, the note falls off of, uh, Nami, and we get to see what it says, and it's very simple, which is why I don't understand why we couldn't have just found out what this note was, like, you know, three or four chapters ago, like last year, because all the note says is, to my buds, there's this chick I gotta see real quick, so I'll be back soon, I promise, Sanji, that's all it is, I'm sure translation and everything, but essentially it's just like, hey guys, I gotta go see this girl, I'll be right back, no problem, see ya, that's all the note was, you know, and I can understand now when uh, Luffy read the note, and Zoro also, and they're just like, yeah, okay, it's no big deal, uh, but now that they know the whole story, they might have a different reaction. I don't know. We'll cut, probably cut back to the present next chapter. Okay, so a little bit more uh, going into Sanji. Let's just let's just examine Sanji's backstory just really quick, okay? The things that we know about him. And he's very interesting because while we know a lot about the, the Straw Hats, at least childhoods a little bit, Sanji, we only know really just one story about his childhood, and that's the story... Well, one story about his flashbacks in general. Like, in Robin's case, we learned all about her childhood. We learned about her running from the world government. Uh, with Nami, we learned about her captivity of Arlong. We got, like, a bunch of different stories inside, like, a bigger story. With Sanji, the only story we got was when he met Zeph. And uh, they were stranded on that, you know, rock for, like, a month or two, you know, starving to death. And that's how we got to know their connection. But before that, we didn't really know much about him. We knew that Sanji, okay, he's from the North Blue, ended up in the East Blue somehow... And then he, uh, st he, I guess he decided to, um, if, if his family is of nobility, I guess he didn't want that or didn't decide, he d something maybe his family was doing he didn't agree with at that young of age and decided to run away, kind of very similar to Sabo in that like. And then he ended up as a busboy on a cruise ship called the Orbit. And then Orbit sank in a storm when the, well, when the, um, when the cook pirates attacked, and then that's the connection there between Zeph and Sanji, but that's, that's it, they get off the rock, they make the frickin' Baratier, and, uh, then that's where Sanji spends the most of his entire life up until he meets the Straw Hats, until he meets Luffy, um, Usopp, Nami, and, uh, Zoro, and then there, that's where we get to the present. Now, interesting thing is if the Vine Smoke family was really looking for Sanji all that long, you'd think it'd be fairly easy to find him, considering he was working on the Baratier his pretty much his uh, entire like late childhood and teenage years. You'd think they, they would find him, considerably since he, he it's very well known that Sanji would piss a lot of patrons off at the uh, at the Baratier, and no one ever, you know, they never found out. I mean, if the Vine Smoke family are still in the East Blue and Sanji's still in the East Blue, I don't see any problems with them... Uh, not finding out, um, because uh, now that we find out that, you know, you have to hop over the red line, I don't think it's very feasible that Sanji left the North Blue, and then somehow scaled over the red line and ended up in the East Blue of his own, uh, of his own power, it was probably his family, so what, um, a lot of people have, have stated was, you know, just because maybe they're nobility, they're not necessarily Celestial Dragons, because all the Celestial Dragons, you know, they live in the, uh, in Marijois, obviously, well, the thing about nobility in the One Piece universe is that even when you have an island that's just like its own little kingdom, uh, you know, even if you know, it's tied with the world government, it's usually going to lead back in some way, shape, or form to the world nobles. Remember the Gao Kingdom, where Luffy was from? There was really no direct connection to world no- well, no, not really, not really. There was the world noble that was visiting the Gao Kingdom. That was the whole point, like, the whole issue with, uh, Luffy's backstory in Sabo. But in terms of, like, the, the town itself, the city itself, and the country, it was just, like, a normal, like, ruler. Um, but they had connections with the, with the Celestial Dragons. So, I, I think it might go back to something like that. The Vine Smoke family in the North Blue, um, it was probably a very prominent royal family, and then they had connections to the, uh, the Tenryo Bito in some way, um, I'm trying, I'm just trying to think of, like, other theories I've heard, I've heard a theory that maybe, like, Sanji's related to Bellamy and Killer in some way, because they're both from North Blue, uh, a lot of important people are from North Blue, Law was from North Blue, big deal, North Blue, um, wasn't Drake, yeah, Drake was from North Blue, too, because that backstory with, uh, Corazon and Law, yeah, so North Blue, man, that's a big deal, I think that's, the other blues are kind of getting, like, what about the West Blue, I want to know about the West Blue, that'd be a pretty interesting place, I'm sure, but, um, 
Yeah, so you have uh, you have that theory. I don't really know if there's a lot of support in that theory. That's mostly just because maybe they're like they're all blonde and they're living in the North Blue. Uh, but hey, Oda seems to be apparently focusing on it a lot, so there might have some credence there. I'm not sure. Uh, but as for right now, after we cut back to the present and we get back to Luffy and their response and everything, we're probably going to get into the brunt of what the Zo arc is going to be at. Because we're not ready just to like, oh, okay, well, guess we got to leave Zo and go rescue Sanji next chapter. That's not going to be the way it's going to go down. I think in next chapter... Or the, the thing that's really going to kickstart whatever we're going to do in the Zo arc is going to be Kanjiro and Kanemon arriving uh, on into the town. And then that's going to kick up something bad because they're samurai from Wano. And then the the, the, the Zao, the Zo and the, the Minks are going to, you know, freak out about that. Or that's going to be some issue. And maybe, maybe Neko Mamushi is going to turn out to be the villain. I don't know. Uh, but I don't think we're done with Zo yet. We still have Zo, but then after Zo is finished we're probably going to move on to, like, the rescue Sanji arc or something and then find out where the tea party is being held and everything and, and what's going on there. We might even get some parallels. We might even get, like, some, while well, this arc is going on, you know, what's going on with Sanji, you know? Because I guess they still have to travel however far it is. Like, we don't know where the uh, the party's being held. Uh, we don't know if it, where it is in New World. Uh, it might be on, like, Whole Cake Island where um, Big Mom's base is set up. But uh, aside from that, I, I, that's all I got, I guess. Uh, what do you guys think of going on with Sanji's past? What do you think of any rumors surrounding his family? What, the, what significance his family is? And, oh, one more thing. Sanji brought up that the person that organized the wedding is probably the same person that also did the whole um, uh, the wanted poster, why it's only alive. My personal guess, and this could just be anybody in his family, I want to say it's his mom. I don't know. I'm just getting mother vibes. I don't know. Maybe he has mommy issues. I don't know. I just, I just have that feeling. It could just as easily be his dad or a brother or a sister or a relative. I'm just getting mom vibes from that. I don't know. But, yeah, so we see Sanji's mom. That might be, that might be kind of revealing of what that's all about. But anyway, thanks you guys for watching. It was a rather long one, but I appreciate you guys sticking with me so for so long. Thanks for watching. Teching, signing out. Epic foreshadowing.